Okay. Uh, the attendance tonight was 18,471. It was a sellout. Eight of eight pay-per-view sellouts this year ever since we brought fans back. Fight of the night was Munoz and Cruz. Performance of the night is Silva, Tayavasa, Kai Kara, Pena, O'Malley, and Oliveira. That's all? Giving out some fucking money tonight. <laughs> well, I guess that, that kind of indicates your thoughts on the, uh, on the on the fight card tonight as a whole, right? I mean, look at it on paper. I mean, in every way that an event could be a home run and be successful, this was. It was an incredible night. Um, the fights were amazing. Um, you know, huge upsets. Uh, the, the first round of, of the main event, I mean, those two didn't. <laughs> They didn't feel each other out. They didn't do anything. They came right out and just started going. You know, the first round was incredibly fun. The whole fight was incredible. And it was an amazing night. I want to get your thoughts on Charles Oliveira as a champion, right? I mean, I guess if there was any question whether he was deserving, he answered it tonight. And especially, you know, with the story, all that it's always been that he, you know, he can't get tested. He doesn't have heart. It seems like he answered any of that tonight. Yeah, I never heard any of that stuff. But uh, no, you got to stay off the fucking internet. Um, so I make my living, sir. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I always thought he was a tough guy. He's had some, you know, some bumps along the way. Same, same thing with Poirier. But like I said at the press conference the other day, they're two blue collar, hard working guys that have grinded their way to the top. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, he, he went in tonight and beat Dustin, and Dustin is, you know, a very, very tough, durable, well-rounded guy who has uh, had a ton of experience and, you know, it, it was a big night for him, for uh, Oliveira. Have you had a chance to, to speak to Dustin at all yet and, and have, you know, an idea of where he might go from here? Or is this a, a tough break for him? No, I mean, we talked after the fight, like up in the octagon for a second. I, I just saw him outside um, when I was walking out here, but, you know, there, there's nothing to talk about right now. He needs to go home relax, enjoy some time with his family, enjoy the holidays, and, you know, when, when he heals up and all the bullshit blows over, we'll figure out what's next for him. There's no rush. We don't have to decide anything tonight. I know you don't normally like to say, you know, who's the number one contender, but you said coming in like, hey, Justin Gaethje's definitely next. So as we sit here, Justin Gaethje definitely next. Yeah, it makes sense. And... I know it's kind of out of your, your hands, but uh, Brazil is a possibility. I mean, obviously, we know what's going on in the world. But do you have any indication of 2022, like, it might be possible for Charles to defend his belt against Gaethje down there? I have no idea what's possible in 2022. I don't give a shit. I could care less. Right. Texas, Florida, Apex. Florida, Texas, Apex. Abu Dhabi, Florida, Texas, Apex. <laughs> Scheduled I don't up. give a shit if anything opens again. Whatever. I don't care. I'm not even thinking about it. I could care less. All right. And then when I asked about the co-main event, obviously uh, a shocking result there. Juliana Pena, somebody that's, you know, been a thorn in your side to get her title shot. She delivered tonight. What did you, what did you think of her performance tonight? Yeah. You know, Juliana is a, is a person who always believed in herself and believed that, that, that she could win this fight if she got it. And, I mean, you heard it at the press conference. You heard it the months leading up to this fight. She did it. She did it tonight. It's one of the great things about the sport. It's what makes the sport so incredible. Uh, when, when somebody's that big of an underdog and nobody, I mean, how many times have we been at these events where when the fight's over, everybody's looking at each other like, holy shit. I mean, it just, it happens all the time here. It is literally what makes the sport so incredible. There were a lot of questions coming in about Amanda, like how much longer she wants to keep doing this. You know, maybe it's her family life kind of the way she wants to go. Did you get a chance to speak to her and see if, you know, she's considering it all, you know, hanging it up, or if she wants to come back and get it? Listen, it, it, it goes right along with all with all the storylines. You know, she's been on top forever, regardless of what you think. She's made shitloads of money. She has a lot of money. And, you know, she has a baby now, family, these things. These things change it. Yeah. If she wants a rematch, do you think she is deserving, given how long she was on top? Yes. Last thing for me, I just want to ask you about Sean O'Malley, another fantastic performance. I mean, you know, he's kind of laughing about being the, the unranked champ and all that. I imagine he's probably going to have a ranking now, but he said coming in, we're not sure if he's ready for the top guys yet. Did he show you tonight that he's ready for the top guys? The guy he beat tonight is a real guy, a uh, very real guy. 
you did it in spectacular fashion. Um, you know, and I know, you know, when you talk to him, two things. He wants to get paid and he wants to fight, uh, fight higher, you know, higher level competition. It's like we're going to have to pay him, get him some fights. Yeah. Dana in the middle of here. Okay. <clears throat> I uh, just want to get your thoughts on Dominic Cruz's performance. You know, had a rough first round there, almost got knocked out, but came back and looked great. What you think? I agree. One, he won fight of the night tonight. Um, yeah, you know, D Dominic Cruz still has it, man. It's, it's impressive. And uh, earlier in the night, Aaron Blanchfield had a dominant win against Miranda Maverick. Uh, you know, young star in the making, it looks like. What'd you make of her performance? Yeah, uh, listen. Anybody you ask me about on this card tonight, I'm going to bring tonight's card was amazing. It was an incredible night of fights. Uh, you know, it, it, it was huge. Pay-per-view was huge. The gate was $8 million. The biggest non conference record gate ever at T-Mobile. And uh, Kayla Harrison was in the crowd. Does Amanda Nunes losing? Does that kind of change anything in, in terms of bringing her in? Yeah, th these, are, these are those things, man. For, for like a Kayla Harrison, um, the Amanda Nunes fight was huge. I mean, if, if they would have faced off, it would have been a massive, you know, mega million dollar fight. I know uh, the dipshit there. What's what's his name? The dipshit that thinks he knows about this business. Yeah. Ravel, Darren Ravel, yeah. Dipshit Darren Ravel said that Amanda Nunes, you know, we were screwed. She could never be a star and all these other things. Let me tell you what, if Amanda Nunes had won tonight, the Kayla Harrison fight would be one of the biggest fights that you would have ever seen, you know? Stay out of our business, dipshit. You know just, nothing. I just want to get a, a little update on somebody else uh, in the Bantamweight division, but Jermaine Durand, he was recently taken out of the rankings, is she, she's still on the roster, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel like it's my place to say why. We'll leave that up to her. Somebody can ask her why she's not in the rankings and what she's going to do. Thanks, it's not my place. It's hers. It's personal yeah. stuff. It's not... Dana, just to ask you, uh, Adesanya put a tweet out in response to UFC saying that the fight was on with Whitaker. He put a cap out, you know, meaning a lie. Um, so he said, he said what? He put a cap, an icon of a cap, you know, an avatar like a cap, meaning a lie. It, was, it means, was a lie. It means you're lying in the millennial. <laughs> <laughs> I had asked somebody what it meant. Confused. Adesanya basically saying, saying the so fight's not on. He's no. saying the fight is not on with Whitaker. Oh. Is it? Hey, hey Hunter, do we have a signed deal with Adam Sonja for Whitaker? Uh, he's still under contract. We're working on a new deal. He's under contract for him. No, uh, no. Hunter, do we have a signed contract for him to fight Whitaker? Yes. He signed the contract? Adam Sonja signed it? Because he said it was a lie tonight uh, on Twitter. Are you asking about the Yes. Yes. We have the writing that he has committed. So he put yeah. on it, there was a lot of it. Listen, you don't want to fight Whitaker. Okay, then I guess we'll find another fight. Okay. Who then gives you. a shit? <laughs> I guess not you. Who gives a shit? I definitely don't give a shit. <laughs> you don't want the Whitaker fight to be on? Okay, then find something else. Why would we lie? When have we ever fucking lied? This fight's coming up. We lied about it? I, I didn't say you lied. 20 fucking years have we ever lied about make, you know, making a fight? Some fights are harder to make than others, but you know I don't think we've ever lied about making a fight. Why would we lie about that fight? Again, I didn't say you lied. He said you lied. I asked you about it. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask you also about Juliana. When you watch the first round, if I would have told you at the you know a couple minutes later after we froze that first round that Juliana was going to win that fight, would you have believed that? Say that again. At the end My head's still all fucked up from out of sign. I'm fucking you up all night tonight. Uh, at the end of the first round, if I had said to you, Pena's going to win this fight, would you have believed it? Well, yes. I mean, I think that anything is possible. I mean, we've seen it so many times. Uh, you know, anything is possible in this sport. What, no, what do you make of her, you know, confidence and, like, you know, where did, where did that come from? Because you look at it. She hadn't even won back-to-back -back fights in about four years, right? I mean, so where does that confidence come from in a person? I had I had my kids in some jiu-jitsu tournament when they were little. And the first time that I ever met Juliana Pena, she walked up to me and uh, introduced herself and told me who she was. 
And she said, I'm going to fight for you someday, and I'm going to be a world champion when I met her. So she's always been like that, you know. And, uh, yeah, she did it, man. She did it in spectacular fashion. Then, uh, what do you do with Cody Garbrandt now? Uh, he drops the flyway hoping to find some new life, and then he gets another brutal knock, first round knockout loss. What do I think about it? Well, what do you do with Cody moving forward now? I don't know. That, that's a good question. You know, you, you move down a weight class and get knocked out down a weight class. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a rough one. Finally, you know, yeah. he, he's been clipped a few times now, and you start, you know. Kai was in here said. I'm not going to fight again until it's for a title shot. He's calling for the winner of Brandon Moreno. Who said that? Kai. The guy, Kai Carver. He's not fighting again until he gets a title shot? That's what he, that's what he says. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dana, right here. Um, I want to touch back on Kayla Harrison. Notably, she was shouted out on the broadcast. You are talking very glowingly. When we spoke to her at Every May Awards, she said she's still a free agent. Would you say that that might be changing soon? That she's a free agent? Yeah. Is the UFC, is the way you're talking and shouting her out, is the UFC making a more serious play to sign Kayla Harrison? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I said it last week that, that we were talking, and then she said it this week that we were talking. We're talking. I want to ask about the prelims with Julian Robertson. Priscilla Catrajera had the, it looked like she gouged her eye when she was trying to get out of the I didn't know that. Choke. I only told me that. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't see it. Saw a picture, but I, but I, I got it all from my own. I didn't. I didn't see that. So no decision will be made until you guys review that. I, 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 I haven't seen it yet. I don't know anything about it except for what Kevin told me. Uh, just want to touch on real quick. You're obviously going to Anaheim next month. The UFC does have the Crypto.com sponsorship. Staples Center, Los Angeles. I'm gonna just say my city. You know, is the UFC planning to come to LA specifically soon? I don't know. I don't know. There's I, nothing. There's nothing in, in the works right now. I hope so. Thank you. Dana, over here. To your floor. Hey, hi. Hey there. So this is the second year that the company has had to navigate through COVID restrictions around the world. Uh, two questions. One, what went better for for you this year? in terms of kind of managing the restrictions around the world and the second part of the question is how much will apex continue to play as part of uh, the venue strategy going forward yeah, I, I didn't hear the first one what was the yeah first the first one was um how how much easier was it for the company to kind of navigate all of the COVID restrictions this year as opposed to the first year when it happened oh it was much easier obviously there were many more places open and, and if, including New York, that, you know, I thought would be impossible at one point. Um, but yes, the Apex will still be used a lot as places to open up that are, uh, you know, fan-friendly, fighter-friendly, UFC-friendly, whatever you want to call it. Um, we will take, we will do fight nights and pay-per-views there. Um, and if not, we'll stay in the Apex. Like I said, I saw this thing. We can do Texas, Florida, Abu Dhabi, and Vegas. I'm fine with that. We had, we, we had an incredible year this year. It was amazing. Um, we can do this forever. We have to. Dana here from back. So in the main event, uh, during the broadcast, Joe Rogan mentioned that it looked like for a moment that Charles Oliveira was digging his fingers into Dustin Poirier's gloves. And I was wondering if that was something that you were made aware of, and if so, what's your thought on it? I don't know anything about that either. If that were the case, would that sort of change the way you, you, you view the fight? That he was digging his fingers in his gloves? Yeah, that well, he that's was... something the ref would handle in there. And you would think? There. Yeah. That's and, got uh, nothing to do with me. All right, fair enough. And uh, as mentioned, you know, a huge upset in the co-main event. There have been some monumental upsets before. GSP, Matt Serra, Ronda Rousey, Holly Holm. Where do you rank? Pena versus Nunes in terms of all-time upsets. It's a big rematch if if, uh, if she wants it. Would you say that it's the biggest upset in UFC history, or perhaps not? We're being evaded or something? It's been like a whole <laughs> <someone out here. laughs> I'm deaf as it is. What, what, what's the question again? Would you say that it's the biggest upset in UFC history? I, 
don't know. That's a, that's a really good question, actually. It's up there with Sarah and GSB. It's up there. And Dana down to your, uh, your right. Because Dana down to your right. Uh, I, just, well, I was curious, what when you're watching the second round of Pena and Nunes, and they're in a firefight, and Nunes has never lost a firefight like that. What's going through your head? Are you saying that this is a bad idea for Nunes to be in this? Or what, like, what, what is going through your head? Oh, when they were doing it, I said, she looks like she's getting tired. I thought Amanda looked like she was getting tired. And I haven't talked to her yet either. And, and were you surprised by not only the, the victory, but just how Juliana won? Because I think most people thought if Juliana was going to win, it would have been with her wrestling. That's her, that's her bread and butter. She outstruck Amanda Nunes. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, well, they were, they were in the pocket there, and they were both throwing. She was definitely landing more, but Juliana's face was getting busted up, too. Juliana was taking some punches, too. But um, it doesn't matter how strong you are, how big you are, how hard you hit. At the end of the day, in, in a five-round fight, it comes down to who's in better shape. And you, you know Juliana trained her ass off in this fight. Did Amanda. Thanks, Dana. Hey, Dana. Question for you. With Amanda Nunes losing tonight, does this result change your opinions if you ever want to see a trilogy fight with Valentina Shevchenko? I, I, I wasn't loving that thing anyway going into this fight. So um, that, that was never really in my, in my plans. Lastly, I heard that Michael Chiesa got in some sort of scuffle. Is there any truth to that during the, that no, fight? No, no. He, he did not get in a fight. Um, let me say this without embarrassing this guy. He had a little bit too much to drink this evening. When she won, he freaked out and tried to jump into the octagon and fell down on his face, cut his eye and busted his eye open, then was arguing with the police that he needed to get into the octagon and be with her. That's his teammate. They dragged him out, got him outside, and calmed him down in the back. And I went back and talked to him for a minute. We're all good. Good? David, down here to your right. Yep, go ahead. How would you assess the 2021 because obviously you had to now be in a situation in my brain. How would you assess 2021 in general? It was, the, it was the best year we've ever had. It was the best year we've ever had. Um, we smashed, I mean, we, we smashed the pay-per-view record. Eight, eight for eight sellouts, every, all those shows that had fans. Um, we broke the all-time pay-per-view record this year for most pay-per-view buys. And tonight, we smashed it. I mean, we didn't just break the record. We, we smashed the record tonight. Um, Incredible fights this year. I just, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It was, it was an awesome year. Incredible year. And if you could pick a highlight of the year, what would it be? Highlight for the year. That's a tough one. I don't know. Right right here, right now, I don't know the answer to that. Um, there were so many things that happened. Good stuff. All good stuff this year. No real negativity, no bad shit. We, 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 we kicked 2020's ass and then we rolled right into 2021 and did the same, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's been awesome. Cool? You guys know me? Thanks for everything this year, you guys. I appreciate it. I hope you guys all have a happy holiday.